Happy Monday, all you mentees. This is the Uncanny Omar from Near Mint Condition, the home of collected editions. And today, I'm taking an advanced look at the Ultimates Omnibus from Marvel Comics. This is the latest printing. So, let's get started. Before getting started, I want to give a huge thank you to David Gabriel and the fine folks at Marvel for sending us an advanced copy of this Omnibus. This Omnibus is due out in the direct market and book market on November 15th. And what we're looking at here, speaking of direct market, is the direct market cover. On the left-hand side is your standard edition cover, and there is a difference in the spines, which is what I always like to point out when doing these overviews, if I have the file handy, that is. The direct market cover is only available at places like your local comic book shop or cheapgraphicnovels.com, Walt's Comic Shop, Dime Breed Collectors, Comics Bugle, Reads Comic Shop, In Stock Trades, Tales of Wonder, Organic Price Books, DCBS. Those are the kind of places that will have your direct market cover, whereas the standard edition is available everywhere. Everything else underneath the dust jacket is exactly the same in the newest printing. So here is the cover. It's this wonderful image by Brian Hitch. And the spine of the book, let's take a closer look at this. Marvel Omnibus, The Ultimates, Mark Miller, Brian Hitch, and then the back of the book. And Parental Advisory, collecting Ultimates 1 through 13, Ultimates 2, 1 through 13, Annual Number 1, and Ultimates 2, Number 1, Variant Sketch Edition. Here is the price, the ISBN, $100, and the Parental Advisory, probably to violence and language, really, that's about it. Because uh, this was right after the comics code broke, and Marvel was printing books without the comics code, so things got a little bit more edgier. Now, we will be comparing it to the second printing, because uh, this is the third printing of the book. But the people that missed out on the second printing that came out in 2019, I believe, uh, now have a chance to get it. So we'll be doing a comparison here in a little bit, but wanted to compare the spines and the back of the book which almost looks identical. Uh, price, ISBN, font they're using. Pictures, maybe, just, no, they're the same. It looks identical. Uh, $100, same retail price. Except this one was printed at the Leo printer, and this one was printed at the Donley printer. All right, underneath, the dust jacket. That iconic image from issue number one. And same over here. Exactly the same thing. Okay. In case you're wondering what that image looks like, there it is. So we're going to crack this book open, talk about the stories collected in here, show off this artwork, take a look at the build, and then do a comparison with the second printing. Um, what I was going to say is that this is the first time we've had a direct market cover. We didn't have a direct market cover for the first printing, nor the second printing, but here we have a direct market cover this time around. Now let's get started. Okay, let's crack this sucker open. We have some blue end paper, which I believe is the same type of paper color that we had in the second printing, which I guess we'll check out here in a little bit. There's issue number one cover. Captain America wants you to serve your country. Here are the credits. The penciler, Mark Miller. No, Brian Hitch is the penciler. Writer's Mark Miller. And you have the inkers down here, including Paul Neary. Love his inks. Colorist being Paul Mounts. Big fan of his colors. Uh, you have other inkers down here. Other colors like Laura Martin. And then you have assistant editors. And then the Ultimates 2, or Ultimates Annual Number 1, is Mark Miller with Steve Dillon doing the pencils and inks. And the colors being Paul Mounts. There you have the letters, the collection edition staff. You have this... I believe this is an introduction here from 2014, which is crazy because I think it's the same one that they've been using uh, since the first printing. And that is by Joss Whedon talking about the inspiration for the Avengers. A lot of it came from here. So again, this collects the Ultimates 1 through 13. It was a series that started in 2004. And right after the series was over, they started a second series called Ultimates 2. All 13 issues of that are collected in here, and the sketch edition is in here, as well as Ultimate's Annual Number 1. And I find Annual Number 1 in a weird place. The book has 856 pages. Now, if you're a stickler for page count and you've paid attention, this has less pages than the second printing. It has less pages than the first printing. 
So we're going to talk about that when we get to that part. And it's all part of the extras. Nothing of the story was removed or anything. So what is the Ultimates? What, what the heck? Has it got anything to do with Ultimate Spider-Man, Ultimate X-Man? Absolutely. The Ultimates is the Ultimate Universe version of the Avengers. That's it. That's it. Instead of calling it Ultimate Avengers, there was a series called Ultimate Avengers after this, but it was just known as the Ultimates. So it's starting over from scratch in a brand new universe. It's when Brian Michael Bendis was working on Spider-Man. Mark Miller was working on the X-Men. They decided to also do another series based on the Avengers. And I will say, regardless of how people feel about the Ultimate Universe, they sold. They sold like crazy. My brothers were reading comics again. And both of them, at the time when this was coming out, they were both in college and... They were like, dude, have you read Ultimates? And me being the older brother, I was like, of course I have. What are y'all talking about? They're like, it is the best representation of Avengers. And me being the older comic book fan in the family, I was like, no, no, it's not. I mean, it's okay, but I mean, it's no Avengers The Crossing. But it was a fresh take on Avengers. You weren't bogged down by a bunch of history that came before this. It was a brand new universe, brand new versions of these characters. So you didn't need to know anything else about the characters. It all started here. And there's a lot of nostalgia for this stuff because, oh my gosh, this was 20 years ago almost. So a lot of those kids that grew up reading the, that's this stuff are now adults, have jobs and families, and they want to go back and relive it. So I completely uh, respect that because I, I, for the same reason, want to go back and relive a lot of the 80s and early 90s stuff that I read. So... How is this different, though? Well, I will say what I said earlier. It is a lot edgier than what the Avengers were. And I will stand by that statement again. There are a lot of things in here that could be considered cringe, but come on. I mean, what, what comic book have taken out of context really isn't. Some of the dialogue in 80s and 90s, whether Silver Age, Golden Age, Bronze Age, if you take something out of a panel and out of context, it could be considered cringe. But I've seen a lot of... Uh, memes based on the things in here, especially Captain America and that A statement, if you know what I'm talking about. You think this A stands? You know what I'm talking about if you've read the story. So it does kick off with Captain America. He is, again, is a World War II hero, but however, there are elements of alien invasions through here. And it ends with Captain America falling into the water in these cold waters. So, you know, if you know the origin of Captain America, you know where that's going to go. Then we fast forward to 2002 and it's Mount Everest. And it's an expedition, if you will. And oh my gosh, Brian Hitch's cinematic art style. This really feels like a huge movie. Uh, you have talks about the Hulk fighting Peter Parker, uh, Spider-Man, and that all happened, I think it was in the Ultimate Marvel team-up stories. The first half of this book really introduces us to Captain America, Thor, the Samuel L. Jackson, Nick Fury, which a lot of people are familiar with now, uh, because it's not Nick Fury from the 616 universe, it is the Ultimate Nick Fury, but Samuel L. Jackson plays him in the movies, and that's where it all came from. As a matter of fact, there's a joke in here where he's like, who do I want? To play me in a movie? Samuel L. Jackson, of course. Uh, but we also get to see Thor in here, Bruce Banner, Hulk, Iron Man, Hank Pym, Giant Man, Janet Pym, the Wasp, and that's how we're introduced to these characters. Eventually, we get a Hawkeye, and we get Black Widow. And they all kind of act like the versions of themselves from the 616 universe, with the exception of Thor. Thor is like a rock star... Uh, like, I, I like the adaptation of Hulk in the or Thor in this uh, particular story. I thought it was a nice change from the norm that we've seen time and time again. Now, the plot lines in this are a little bit darker, and I guess you could say almost um, of its time. There are things in here that they talk about that were pop references or pop culture references of their time when they're talking about Freddie Prince Jr. and things like that, getting Joe as a Freddie Prince Jr. and Janet. I thought the story of Captain America was a really interesting and sad story with what happened to Peggy, what happened to his, uh, the rest of his squad when they were in World War II. Shannon Elizabeth makes an appearance here. See what I mean? Like pop culture references like that, that you're not going to uh, find. 
But to be fair, you find pop culture references in 80s, 70s, 60s comics too. But there are a lot of it in here. Uh, I will say that. And there are a lot of dark stories in here. A lot darker than what they were doing in the 616 universe. And any casual MCU fan picking this up because of the movies can pick it up because of that basic knowledge of the MCU. But there are a lot more darker elements in here. I guess kind of in the way if they saw uh, Infinity War. And here we have, yes, the introduction of Black Widow and Hawkeye. This is a really awesome scene right here when they throw Hulk off of the, I'm sorry, Bruce Banner off of the helicopter just in the hopes that he transforms into the Hulk. And look at that image. This is what a lot of people remember. This is cinematic type of widescreen artwork, which he brought from his run on The Authority. Uh, the Authority by Mark Miller, first Warren Ellis, then Mark Miller, uh, with artwork by Brian Hitch and then Frank Quietly. But that's um, what he brought over from there. We have the cinematic type of art that he was drawing. So there's a lot of spread pages here. And a lot of this story is carried by the beautiful and detailed artwork that you're seeing through these pages. I forgot to talk about Thor, who is written like a messiah type of character or just completely insane guy that looks like a rock star. And like I said, I thought it was a unique take on the character. Now, when I was talking about dark elements, um, I, there's a couple things that are in this particular book that weren't really being shown in the 616 universe. We have things about discrimination in here and domestic violence. The domestic violence in this, if you've read it, you know what I'm talking about, goes to the extreme. Now, there is a solution or a closure to that uh, issue, but it is, this, this the book does not shy away from it. Um, I will say that. <laughs> and there's a lot of that kind of joke in here. And um, we see Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver eventually. So again, a take on the Avengers is all this is. One of the things that I noticed in the second printing uh, is where the annual is. So the annual for some reason is all the way in the back after the Ultimates Volume 2 number 13. But really it fits in after Ultimates 2 number 6. And seven. So if you want to read it that way, you can flip to the back if you want. This is also the run where the Katari can be found. As a matter of fact, that's kind of what ends the very first run of the Ultimates Volume 1. That's who makes the attack on Earth, and it's their first appearance. So I feel like this is for people that love the MCU, don't want to get bogged down by a bunch of history, and want a quick and easy to follow story but also has adult elements in it. That's what Ultimates is. I say adult elements, and then there's a lot of uh, sophomoric type of humor in here, which I am not above, because that's my kind of humor. All right, so let's take a... Oh, I didn't even talk about the made-up team here from different uh, nationalities. Just, my gosh, the artwork. So kick-ass. Which is a comic that eventually Mark Miller worked on. But just look at that. My gosh. That is so awesome. Even the... Because I know people are going to ask about this right here. So we got to do this in parts because it's just so big. But the fold-out pages are all in here. It's rare that an omnibus or collected edition does this. So I'm glad that they did it. Sometimes they shrink these things into like a little widescreen format for two pages. So I'm glad that they did this. So it goes across. I mean, we're not done yet. This is the fight with Asgard and Loki. But just to kind of give you a taste of what this is like. And these are all full splash pages. That's crazy. But it is intact. It was intact in the... First and second printing. And in the um, oversized hardcover. Let's not forget about those. What was not included in the oversized hardcover, though, is the annual, which let's get to that. All right. Much like the very first and second printing, the covers are right after issue number 13 of volume two. And they are all textless covers. 
or what some people call virgin covers. And here's Ultimates 2, or no, this is Ultimates 13. Ultimates 2, number 1 right there, and these are all the covers. Captain Britain, yeah, these cats right there. And after all this is where you're going to see annual number one in there. But oh, before we get to annual number one, let's look at the variants. So this is annual number one. For some reason, it's after all the covers. So it's like at the last minute, they decided to put it in, which I'm glad they did. Uh, this is the artwork by Steve Dillon. Again, it is written by Mark Miller. Now, after this particular annual is where we get the extras. Now, we'll do a comparison here in a little bit. But the extras is what is missing uh, from this book. And there really depends on what type of reader you are. The only thing that's really missing from here are the um, commentary by Mark Miller and Brian Hitch. There's the sketchbook right there. There's the script, which you got to see the artwork for, and unused pencils, original art right here. We'll do a comparison to the second printing here in a minute. Cover right there with inks. Inside pages without the colors. Wow, it's such an awesome image. The pencils are insane. How does he keep track of all these characters? This is the gatefold layout that we saw earlier when I was holding it out. And the inks right there. That's from Ultimate Iron Man. Was, oh, I think that was written by Orson Scott Clark, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Orson Scott Card, if I'm not mistaken. And then unused Black Widow sketch and Thor sketch. Now, as far as the binding of this one, it was printed at the Donley printer, and there's that eye. So let's do a quick comparison to the first printing. All right, for the sake of this overview, new printing, original printing is what we're going to call these books. And opening them up, yeah, I thought that was the same color. It's a little bit darker tone here. And something you probably notice is that this is already closing better than this printing right here. Keep in mind, this was printed at the Leo printer, in China, and this one here printed at the Donley printer in China. Different printers. And just again, showcasing that exact same introduction right there. Joss Whedon. Let's look at a couple more pages. Then we'll look at the extras that are missing. North Atlantic 1945. Colors look just a little bit brighter here. Which is good in a way, when especially when you have dark scenes like that. It looks a little bit muddled up there. Uh, where it's a little clear and crisp here. A little more clear and crisp, if you will. Hope that's coming across well on video, but something that I noticed. Let's look at a couple of spread pages, actually. Okay, so this is our very first spread page, Mount Everest, which is a gorgeous picture. Again, it's a little brighter here than over there. And then we've seen splash page. Did we see splash pages? I thought we did, but just in case we didn't, let's look at New York City. You can see how this book is curving a little more than here. So actually, I wanted to show when you get to about halfway through the book, it doesn't really matter because both of the printings open up the same way. You get just as much art loss there with that gutter curve. So. Just want to do a little quick comparison. All right, what exactly is missing from this new printing? Well, let me show you. Immediately after annual number one, we start the behind the scenes sketches, the character designs here. Whereas in this printing and the original printing, you get a commentary by Brian Hitch and Mark Miller. And it is quite a long commentary. And then you get a commentary on Ultimates 2, featuring their time on the books. And eventually, you get to the sketches here. There we go. Well, they're a little out of order, but you get the idea. And then everything else is exactly the same. Get sketches, the Wizard 123 cover, unused cover, and then 
jumping right to the original art here. So even though it's a little bit out of order, everything else is the same. I was doing a comparison, believe me. It took me a long time to make sure nothing else is missing from the book. So again, to just reassure people, the only thing missing from the new printing is the commentary on Ultimates 1 and Ultimates 2. So if that's your type of extra that you like, maybe try to find the second printing or first printing instead of the new printing. If it doesn't bother you that those things are missing, then all you need is this printing. Now, the actual script is in here, kind of like it was in the original printings, but everything else is the same. With the exception of what I said, uh, sometimes the pictures are out of order. Like, that's Ultimates 2, I believe. Yeah, that's back here, if I'm not mistaken. Just things are so out of order. Mm. Okay. But that, as they say... Nope. No, it's not. That's not all that's what they say is that. Because I wanted to talk about the paper stock, but I forgot to. It is a little bit thinner than the paper stock that they used in the original printing. Not not by much, but there is a little bit of a difference. And honestly, I didn't see any art bleed through on this. I didn't have any issues reading it. Maybe because it's really colorful. But immediately, one thing I did notice is the stock that they used on the dust jackets. It's um, It is a little bit thinner. It's probably the thinnest one that I've seen. Not that it's as thin as, like, the paper stock they're using inside of the book, but there is definitely a difference between the two here. And again, this is the Leo paper, this is the Donnelly printer. And this is the first time I've noticed it on an Omnibus. I don't think I've noticed it on any other Marvel nor DC Omni, but I did want to point that out. Now that, as they say, is that. If you're interested in purchasing this book, don't forget to check out our sponsor. CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off cover price. They have excellent shipping and prompt and helpful service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And don't forget that CGN also takes pre-orders. That way you don't miss out on the hottest releases. And they are currently running a special promotion for you Minties. If you're a first-time customer, after receiving your order confirmation email, reply back to that email and let them know Near Mint Condition sent you their way. They will then apply a free shipping promotional credit to your next order in the US. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with the kind of deep discount, quality shipping, and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. And that was the content, the page count, and build of this omnibus. Let me know in the comments down below if you've never picked it up and this is your first time picking up the book, if you own the second printing, the first printing, the OHCs, the trade paperbacks, uh, if you've read it before, what you think of the story. And if you hope one day they'll do an Ultimatum and Ultimates 3 Omnibus collection. This was the Uncanny Omar. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe, and ring that bell for notifications to let you know when our videos are going live. We are on Spreadshop and Patreon. Amazing ways to support the channel if you can do so. And more importantly, all of you stay healthy and safe out there. Much love.